And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director Doug Lyons is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, with its inertial upper stage and support equipment, is the largest and heaviest payload ever launched by the Space Shuttle. It is the world's most powerful X-ray telescope and has eight times greater resolution and will be able to detect sources more than 20 times fainter than any previous X-ray telescope. Just past the T-minus eight minute mark, Pilot Jeff Ashby is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. CLS is go for OAA retract. The orbiter access arm is now being retracted away from the vehicle. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the shuttle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if necessary. T minus seven minutes and counting. JRPS OTC, start the APU strip chart recorders. This JRPS, that is complete, thank you. PLT OTC, perform APU pre start. PLT, APU pre start in work. And the orbiter test conductor has given pilot Jeff Ashby the go ahead to perform the auxiliary power unit pre start procedure. T minus six minutes from launch. OTC PLT, APU pre-start complete. We have three great talkbacks. I copy. And we now have live TV from our Banana Creek viewing site of First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton as she has arrived at the Kennedy Space Center to watch this historic launch. We've received the signal from Mission Control in Houston to start the orbiter flight recorders. T minus five minutes and counting. CLS is go for orbiter APU. And we have a go for APU start. Start. PLT and work. And CDR, reconfigure heater. Also, at this time, the launch team is counting the liquid oxygen component to the external tank. The team is now initiating the launch tank. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. The main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines have been turned on in preparation for launch tonight. T minus four minutes of counting. 
A final test on the flight control surfaces will be conducted at this time. This is a programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. Final checks of these aerial surfaces of the orbiter's wing, elevons, and rudder are being completed at this time. This verifies that the orbiter's hydraulic systems are operational. And the three main engines are being gimbled as a final test prior to launch. T minus three minutes and counting. All is going well for tonight's launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia. This launch should be visible. This launch should be visible from most of the southeastern coastal regions. And we are completing the purge of the shuttle's main engines at this time. TLT, with no unexpected errors, can work. The gaseous oxygen vent hood is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank at this time. And flight crew, close and lock your visors. Initiate O2 flow. 30 years ago today, Apollo reached the moon. Today, Chandra starts its journey to explore the far reaches of the universe. We wish you success as the spirit of adventure continues. Just pass out. Thank you, Happy Van. We're getting our visors. We'd like to send our thanks to the people who built and prepared the Chandra X-ray Observatory, the Silver State Booster, and of course the Space Shuttle Columbia. On this 30th anniversary of the first moon landing, we'd like to thank you for carrying on the tradition of excellence. All systems are go for Columbia. T minus one minute, 15 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressures. T minus one minute and counting. T minus one minute and counting. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. Everything is still looking good for launch of Shuttle Columbia from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 45 seconds and counting. Coming up for a go on auto sequence start. Go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 12. 10. 9. 8. 7. Cut off. Cut off is given. Can't you do this ACD? But it's just. We have uh, uh, hydrogen in the app. We have a cutoff of our sequence. Now. And did this deep up? Uh, we see the spike. Okay. Any uh, emergency securing? Uh, negative, sir. Everything's coming down. I copy an SPE incident. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, RSLS or GLS hold? We are RSLS hold. Okay. Uh, Columbia, you GLS is reporting an RSLS hold indication. Safety is in progress. DFS is 101, CAS is 101, and LDD is 1. NHD copies. And attention all stations, we have had cut off. All personnel proceed to the recycle control sequence, sequence 18. Ignition set picks are safe. Engines are showing purge 3. We're NHD to no CHD, we're down around 100 ppm in the ass. This is hydrogen. Okay, and CHD, I copy that. And uh, keep us advised uh, if it uh, begins to increase. And uh, OTC, 
Tokyo, uh, we'll see. GLS NTD? GLS is go for orbiter APU shutdown. Very good. No, TC, you've got to go for APU shutdown. GLT, OTC, perform APU shutdown. GLT, APU shutdown and work. GLS is showing no MPS fire detectors tripped. At this point, we're in the process of safing the vehicle, making sure that all aspects of the shuttle and crew are safe. There are no indications of any of any fire, anything out of the ordinary on the vehicle. Go for transition to G9. There was a indication of hydrogen, high levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. They dropped off significantly within a short period of time. GPS has been on 212. I'd like to verify the OAA is extended and locked. OAA is extended and locked. Copy. Orbiter access arm is back in position at the crew hatch. Again, we're in the process of safing the vehicle after a cutoff prior to main engine start. OTC 16 or Again, just prior to main engine start, we had indications of high levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. We had a redundant mop sequencer hold called that stopped the countdown and prevented the main engines from firing. OTC, PLT, APU shutdown is complete. Copy that, NTD. And NTD, copy. CDR, reconfigure heaters. CDR, that's in work. We now are now in the process of reconfiguring the vehicle for a safe mode. CDR, heater reconfigure is complete. Copy that, CDR on panel F7, the flight controller power switch off. Flight control power is coming off. MTLT on panel R1. Power distribution, essential bus source, field cell 1, 2, and 3 switches off. Field can't work. OTC, PLT 12. Go ahead. Okay, we want to take the first high load duct switch to A off of the AD. We put the unit to. Okay, you want the first to A. First to A, high load to A. Again, we're monitoring the situation at this time. The first high load duct Peter switch. And CDR, what do you say? And first high load duct Peter is gone to A. Copy. Commander Eileen Collins and pilot Jeff Ashby are in the process of reconfiguring the orbiter for a safe mode. No indications in the firing room of anything out of limits at this time. As we continue to safe the vehicle, the orbiter access arm is back in place. Can you verify 29? 29 uh, PCMMU to GSC control. Verified. Copy. The standard pre-planned procedures for this type situation are being implemented by the firing room engineers. As everyone continues to monitor their consoles very closely and as we continue to safe the vehicle. Power distribution, essential bus source switches, field cell one, two, and three switches, all three off. That is complete. Okay, and on panel F8, I need the flight controller power switch off. Flight controller power is off on F8. Okay, CDR, OTC on panel C3, the OI PCMMU power switch off. That's a work. Switches off. Copy. And we we inadvertently went to uh, power two on that before we went off. Okay, copy that. Houston flight NTD verify ready for G9 transition. Houston flight is go. Copy. And CMPL C Lock to CLHY NTD verify configured for G1 to G9 GPC ops transition. CMPL is ready. C Lock. C Lock is go. And CLHY. LHY is ready. I copy. And attention all stations. This is NTD on 212. All console operators are to discontinue all LDB commands and reads during pass ops transitions. And OTC NTD on 212, you've got to go for G9 transition. Copy that. DPS OTC, step 34. DPS copies, that's in work. CPROP NTD on 212. CPROP. Okay, uh, any words on uh, what may have caused our increase in H2 concentration in the ass? 
still looking at data. Okay, and you all did not perform any uh, securing, is that correct? Now, let's see, the ET is vented. Uh, I guess and, I can say. Yeah, we, we did not isolate the engines. Okay, right, and you, did you have to perform any non-standard uh, securing? No, not at all. Okay. The, um, we saw that spike to 600 here, looking at some data, but it looks like the real value looked like it was more like around 125, stable. Looks like it's one data point up, up at 600. Okay, copy that. And CDR DPS. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yes, ma'am. On the BSS keyboard, uh, a message reset and then an OPS 000 Pro. That can work. And DPS from CDR, that's complete. DPS copies. On panel 06, GPC mode 5 switch to standby. That can work. And our oh, DPS CDR, that's complete. DPS copy. Entity TPC, I can give you step 70, sir, sequence 18. I copy 70. OTC DPS. Go ahead, DPS. Yes, sir, step 44. DPS is in a G9, downlist format 44. Copy that. Entity and TPC, OTC, pass ops transition to G9 complete. And entity copies. Okay, and uh, CHGD NTD on 212? HGD, go. Okay, H2 concentrations in the AF currently. What's our level? Say again? What is our H2 level in the AF? At this time, we're reading uh, 9 ppm. Okay, copy that. I'd like to verify the ET inner tank O2 concentration is less than 10,000 ppm. That's step 44, CHD. Copy. HD's got that on work. Okay, copy that. And CDR and TD on 212. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we got inside 10 seconds, and uh, our uh, high gas operator saw an increase in H2 concentration, and uh, based on that, called a manual cutoff. And that cutoff was executed prior to engine ignition uh, commands being sent at 6.6 .6 seconds. So our uh, scrub turnaround scenario was a GLS hold, and uh, we're currently working our recycle control sequence. Uh, we'll finish up with critical safing here and get in the drain and then uh, have our crews out to uh, help you with your egress. CDR copies all that. Thanks for the update. Okay, and attention all stations, this is the NTD performing the post cutoff safety check. Page 1083. CISL, sub step one. ISO verifies one. DPS two. DPS and as we heard from the NASA test director, Doug Lyons, we are in the process now of continuing to safe the vehicle. Uh, there is no uh, other opportunity to attempt a launch today. Uh, we'll be making preparations to open the crew door, the hatch and allow the crew to egress and return to their crew quarters as we continue to continue to monitor this problem, a situation that has caused us to abort our launch attempt today. Again, uh, the vehicle is uh, in the safe mode. It's continuing to be saved. The levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment uh, spiked to uh, levels that were not allowed for launch, and we had a RSLS uh, hold called uh, redundant launch sequencer.
redundant set launch sequencer hold, which caused us to uh, abort the launch prior to main engine ignition. Again, the orbiter access arm is in place around the vehicle. As soon as the uh, commander and pilot and the rest of the crew members uh, finish safing uh, the crew compartment, uh, we will open the hatch and the crew will egress. Uh, engineers in the firing room will continue to monitor the situation and strive to understand exactly what happened that caused this abort uh, or what caused the high levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. Also later this morning we will drain the external tank of the 500,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Copy that NTD. And NTD copies. The vehicle has been taken off of its internal power and is now on ground power. Jill Fell, load share. 18 TMQC on 151. TMQC. Copy. No other indications of any problems were identified, but the engineering community will continue to monitor the situation as we continue to safe the vehicle and allow the crew to egress. OK, that's at work. And crew license are coming up. OTC, PLT, and PSC limb reconfig is complete. Copy that. NTD, OTC. Go ahead, OTC. Yeah. Um, ground power connect and load shares and work. Uh, critical safing complete. OK, and I copy that, OTC. And DPD, OTC. Go ahead. Uh, step 66 to perform the mech pre flight bite evaluation. And as we heard, all the critical safing steps have been completed. Uh, in the next uh, few minutes, the crew will unbuckle themselves and open the hatch. NTD, T-Prop. Sorry, T-Prop. Yeah, sir, if you could, uh, we'd like to get permission to start lock strain as uh, expeditiously. I copy that. I concur. Uh, just uh, one moment here, and we'll uh, work those steps. And OTC, TBC, SCM, LPS, JRPS, PTC, NTD on 212, perform recycle at T-minus 20 minutes, OTC. OTC copies. TBC. TBC copies. SCM. SCM copies. LPS. LPS copies. JRPS. JRPS. Step 74, perform recycle on PTC. As we continue safing operations, Thank you. Uh, we will begin draining the... All test team personnel return to your normal command channels at this time. Orbiter personnel remain on OIS channel 212. And NTD is going to OIS channel 232. And NTD, SD. Go ahead, SD. We need ECL on 161. We will begin draining the external tank of its uh, liquid propellants, uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, once we get into stable replenish, then at that time we will open the crew hatch and allow the crew of five to egress and that would come in the next 30 minutes or so. So the orbiter is uh, in a stable condition. Uh, we're in the process now of reconfiguring for drain back of the propellants out of the external tank. And again, once that drain back has been uh, initiated and stabilized, then we will be able to have the crew leave the vehicle. And again, that should come up within the next 30 minutes or so. To recap what happened, we were counting down without any troubles at all. Uh, then just prior to main engine ignition, we had a hold call due to indications of high levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. Uh, this was a violation of our launch commit criteria. A hold was placed on the count at about T minus six or seven second mark prior to main engine ignition.
Verify. Okay. HDD verify. As a result of this hold and this, at this point, uh, we are unable to continue with our launch countdown today and have effectively scrubbed an opportunity for today. It's unclear at this time when our next opportunity will come. Uh, discussions will be held on the reasons for the indications of hydrogen at unacceptable levels in the aft engine compartment. And those, in, those discussions will uh, certainly begin within the next hour and a half or so. Uh, then based on recommendation from the engineering community and the mission management team, uh, we will make a determination uh, when we will next attempt our launch. Again, at this time, uh, the vehicle is in the safe mode. We expect to see the crew egress Columbia within the next 30 minutes. Uh, so that will be a not performed. It was automatically transferred. Okay, copy. And OTC side point. Go ahead. Step 11 verify. Copy. With 1911. I'm sorry, sequence 30, step 11. Okay. OTC double OS. Go ahead. Yeah, I can give you uh, step 9 and 34, all uh, steps performed. Okay. OTC CAPU. Go ahead, APU. Yeah, I'll give you step 12 out of sequence 19. Copy. And also um, for APU one time on sequence 18, we'll give you 6 minutes and 9 seconds. Step 18 on sequence 18. Okay, that's 6 minutes, 9 seconds. That's correct, 6 minutes and 9 seconds. Okay, copy that. OTC, CFME. Go ahead. Okay, I can give you steps 24, 25, and 26 in sequence 19. We have a fill-in for step 26. Okay. The GMT is 0450. Okay. And we'll not perform step 27, and uh, 28 and 29 will come later. Copy. OTC, CPVD. Go ahead, CPVD. Uh, sequence 19, step 41, payload bay flow rate increased. Step 40 to fill in is 230 pounds per minute. 39 and 40 were performed. Okay. okay. EPD, OTC, 212. Mr. EPD, go ahead. Okay, sequence 30, step 72, power down your pick racks. They're down. Okay, they were already down. That's a firm. Okay, copy. OTC CGSS. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, a little confusion on sound suppression recycle. In sequence 19, step 36 was a not performed. 37, the, the recycle. And sequence 22 is, is going to be in work. Okay, 37 was not performed. Uh, no, so 37 is going to be in work. 36 was not performed. Okay, copy that. Okay. 
TOS OTC. TOS go. Yeah, let me know when you're ready to pick up sequence 30 steps. That's your GLS mainline termination and your ARSIS transfer. Okay, we're just fin finishing up the recycle and sequence 65 will be right with you. Copy. OTC DPS. Go ahead, DPS. Yes, there's step 56 and uh, step 10 there. Uh, we cycled the T-minus 20-minute config complete, and uh, about 30 seconds ago we got a loss of uh, OI and uh, downless momentary. Okay. We're okay now? I confirm. Okay. Copy that. We'd like uh, LPS to uh, look at that. LPS, OTC, 212. LPS, OTC, 212. LPS. Did you copy DPS? No, sir. Uh, we had a momentary loss of OI and downlift. We'd like to check that. We were going to uh, hardline data. Okay. This is shuttle control, and, and everyone in the launch control center is in the process of configuring their consoles and making sure that the orbiter is configured for uh, uh, detanking operations, which should begin in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes or so. Okay, copy that. Again, no further indications from the analysis that is ongoing and the troubleshooting that is continuing as to why we had high levels of hydrogen uh, indicated in the aft engine compartment. Uh, that troubleshooting and those evaluations are continuing at this time. That's uh, mission management team and the engineers in the firing room are uh, assessing the data that is uh, available to them at this time to try to make any determination that they can. Again, the vehicle is in a safe mode. There is no danger there. Uh, the crew continue to be safely strapped in their seats with uh, 36 and uh, going over their configuration of the cockpit to make sure that the switches there are in the safe mode as we make preparations to detank the volatile fuels in the external tank. And once this detanking process begins and is stabilized, then we'll be able to allow the crew to egress. Again, that should be coming up in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. We will be holding a press conference later this morning once things have uh, fully stabilized on the pad and we'll identify the participants in that press conference as soon as we can. Uh, those participants, of course, being vital to giving us an understanding of exactly what the situation was at the time of the abort. We will announce the time of that press conference as soon as it is as soon as it is determined. Obviously, right now the uh, number one priority is to make sure that the vehicle remains in a safe mode and that we get the crew out in a timely manner. And GLS go. Yeah, and 46, is that complete now? That's in work. ODC GLS. Uh, 46. 46 is complete. Copy.
Copy OTC. Copy, please. Yeah, look at sequence 30, step 83. Is that going to be necessary? Assuming a 24 hour scrub. What was that sequence and stop again, OTC? Sequence 30, step 83. Okay, stand by. And CDR and TD on 212. Hey, CD, this is CDR. Go ahead. Okay, I'm for you and your crew. Uh, we do have uh, locks and drain, and our LH2 remains in stable replenish, which is the configuration we need to be in to send uh, our folks in. And the closeout crew is uh, clearing the BDA now and route to the 195, and they should be there here uh, shortly. CDR copies. OTC, FCP. FCP, go. Yeah, we will be doing that sequence 30 step 83, but we need to do our regular recycle stuff first to external reactants. Okay, you get the films for 383. OTC, FCP, uh, so that's step 83, uh, quantity is 67.5, and we'll need to do it in three hours. Thank you, FCP. DPS OTC. DPS. Need Gen 136, please. Copy. Uh, you're on there, ground one. OTC, PD. All right, go ahead. Step 61 is complete in sequence 18. Okay, copy that. SCP OTC. SCP. Yeah, when we get uh, our guys back up there, we'll give you a go in sequence 30, step 84. Okay, copy.
FCP, OTC. FCP. Did you uh, complete your recycle? No, that's in work. Okay, copy. This is Shuttle Launch Control. As engineers continue to monitor the situation and discuss the situation, it appears that uh, initially it appears that uh, the indications of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment uh, may be a faulty indication. Uh, we're looking at that situation right now to verify that. Uh, if that is the case, and again the engineers are in the process of verifying that at this time, uh, then there is work that needs to be done to remove and replace the igniters that lit uh, just prior to the cutoff. And that work appears to, uh, looking at the charts, uh, lead us toward a 48-hour turnaround. Also, we must refill the sound suppression system. Engineers are uh, planning on gathering in the next 20 minutes for a meeting to uh, discuss this option and also to discuss and to verify that, in fact, it was just a faulty indicator that indicated we had high levels of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. Again, it appears to be a faulty indicator that is being verified at this time. PLT, OTC. Also, because the igniters lit, uh, we must remove them and replace them with new igniters, and that would press us toward a 48-hour turnaround. Again, that is a, uh, very preliminary. Engineers and the management team will be meeting in the next 20 to 30 minutes and making a final determination on that. Uh, following that meeting, we expect to have a press conference where we'll bring some of the managers and engineers over to address the situation and give us a a clearer idea of exactly what the situation was that we saw that caused us to abort our launch attempt today and also what we'll be looking at as far as a turnaround timeline is concerned. Again, we expect the astronauts to be departing the vehicle once we get into a stable replenish or in, into a, uh, not a sta once we get into a stable detanking operation and that should be coming up within the next 15 minutes or so. The vehicle has been saved. Uh, Detanking operations are beginning to commence. And engineers will be gathering in the next 20 minutes to make a final determination on this indication of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment and what our turnaround scenario would look like. Again, at this point, very preliminarily, it looks like we are going to be looking at a 48-hour turnaround. And MS2 OTC. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like you to perform your RCS driver and ohm safing for your checklist.
Well, go, that's important. Thank you, sir. OTC PLT on RCS recon take complete. Thank you. And the closeout team has arrived at the White Room. They will be assisting the astronauts out of the orbiter. That's one OTC. One OTC. And CDR two. OTC MS one guard. MS one on panel O nineteen. I'd like you to take TV. MS one guard. Okay. I'd like you to take TV. TV power switch to off. TV switch to off. Thank you, sir. And CDR two C. CDR, go ahead. Jump panel 07. Tack hands 1, 2, and Go ahead on 07. Okay, tack hands 1, 2, and 3. All three mode switches to off. Panel 07, tack hands 1, 2, and 3 are coming to off. And CDR, when you're ready, I need you on panel 08. And OTC, the tech in 1, 2, and 3 are off and ready on 08. Okay, radar, altimeter 1 and 2 switches both off. Radar, altimeter 1 and 2 are coming to off. And OTC, that's complete. Thank you. OTC, ECL. ECL, go. Okay, just to let you know before these guys try to open the hatch. Um, step 155, we're above 15, so they're going to need to open the vent valves. Okay, that's in sequence 30. 30, that's affirmative. 3155. Are you ready to open those vent valves now? Yeah, they can go ahead and do that. Okay, and CDR, OTC. CDR, go ahead. Okay, we're ready to have you open the vent valves before we obviously open that hatch, and we'll give you a go for that. I understand we have a go to open the vent valves at this time, is that correct? And ECL, is that correct? Oh, that's affirmative. Okay, you got to go, CDR. And vent valve ISO and vent valve switches are coming open. And OTC MS2, uh, 019 TV power switch is off and RCS driver and home safety is complete. Thank you, sir. And OTC CDR, the Kevin vent ISO and vent valves are open and the master alarm is set. Okay, copy that. And ECL step 157. Yeah, let me, I'll give it to you after we get down below 15. And CDR, TC. CDR, go ahead. The panel A13. Uh, CDR is ready. Okay, GPS. GPS slash Siggy power switch off. And CDR, that may not be install installed. Uh, we concur with that. Okay, sorry about that. OTC CPVD. Call CPVD. Uh, do we need to open the work vent doors? They're starting to hatch work. Uh, what do we got for reading? We got 20.56, 20.44. This is a, um, there's no not performed option on this one. Okay. Then let's Put go ahead. Step 150 is sequence 30 and work it now. Okay. This is Shuttle Launch Control and the closeout team again is in the white room uh, working on the hatch to the orbiter Columbia. 
Okay, for step 157. Orbiter test conductors and the NTD are talking with uh, Commander Eileen Collins and pilot Jeff Ashby, as well as the mission specialists on board to make sure that uh, everything is configured properly for them to depart the vehicle. Uh, the closeout team is venting the orbiter this time to equalize the pressure between the orbiter and the uh, atmosphere and the, and the white room. Uh, once this is complete, the door will be opened and the crew will begin to egress the vehicle. In the meantime, managers in the firing room are uh, leaving their seats and heading down to the meeting that is planned to occur in the next uh, 15 minutes or so, where they will gather to assess the situation that occurred this morning that caused our launch to be aborted just seconds before launch uh, prior to main engine ignition. Again, it appears initially that there were some indications that uh, may have may turn out to be faulty indications, but however, they were indications nonetheless that uh, gave our engineers in the firing room enough concern that they called a an abort uh, due to the possibility of high concentrations of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment. This is being assessed. The managers will continue to talk about it and walk through the saving as they walk through the saving procedures of the vehicle and as the astronauts make ready to egress. Uh, the engineers and managers are uh, preparing to discuss the situation, uh, looking at a turnaround opportunity. Uh, at this time, it appears that we will not be able to turn the vehicle around uh, Within a day, it will take probably two days to turn the vehicle around to replace the igniters uh, under the main engine bells that need to be replaced and to refill the sound suppression system as well as to complete the turnaround procedures uh, called out in our scrub turnaround charts for a situation such as this. We are planning a press conference. That press conference time has not been established. However, it will follow the meeting that is scheduled to begin in about 10 minutes. Again, the closeout team is at the White Room. They are in the process of opening the orbiter, the orbiter's crew hatch, the access hatch that allows the five astronauts to enter and exit the vehicle. The situation is, uh, in a, the situation is stabilized at this time at the pad as uh, detanking operations have begun, and we are in a process now of stable drain operations. Nine cell or two cell. Five cell. Sequence 30, step 144, you ready for that? Stand by. And uh, OTC, we reset the uh, klaxon for the hatch opening. Thank you. ITC MS2, main bus switch switching is complete. Okay, MS2, now I'd like you to do drag shoot this, drag shoot safing, and that's on panel 015. Go ahead. Go echo, main B, drag shoot system 2, circuit breaker open. It's open now. Okay, now I need you on panel 016. Go ahead. Go echo, main C, drag shoot system 1, circuit breaker open. Open now. Thank you. OTC PD, in sequence 18, steps 66 and 67 complete. All right, copy. OTC ISL. Bill, go ahead. Yes, uh, sequence 30, steps 144 through 149 are not performed. They're already are in remote. Do that, thank you.
PSOTC. CMPS. Are you looking for a go to terminate your research pump yet? Uh, our, ter our pumps were terminated uh, prior to the cutoff. Okay, we'll call 141, 142 not performed in sequence 30. Sure. OTC DPS 212. DPS go. Yes, sir, in sequence 30, I can give you step 50 complete. 51 not performed, and 52 through 58 complete. OS is OTCM 212, go. Complete with our steps for the scrub turnaround for GLS. We'd like to leave station at this time. Okay, and thank you, GLS. Thank okay. you. GLS, OTC. GLS. Yeah, Barbara. Also, in sequence 19, you're verified there if you recycle. Just want to get it on the net. That's firm. If GLS is complete with a recycle. Okay. And that was step 17. I uh, got it. Thank you. Off the net. Copy. No VCC. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I can officially give you uh, step 172, which is egress of flight crew. Okay, we'll put that in work. Thank you.
This is Shuttle Launch Control, and everything continues to go smoothly for the egress of the astronauts out of Space Shuttle Columbia. Our mission managers are in the process of meeting at this hour to determine to determine the uh, faulty indications or the indications of hydrogen in the aft engine compartment and the repercussions for our an abort for our abort today. Uh, there are indications that uh, a 48-hour turnaround is likely. However, uh, there is a school of thought that uh, that tells us that we might be able to uh, turn around uh, the operations in a shorter period of time, which if we are successful at doing that, then we could possibly see a launch as early as tomorrow. However, that will be discussed over the next uh, hour or so as the managers and the engineers uh, continue to, to meet. Uh, meanwhile, the astronauts are leaving the vehicle. Uh, they will leave the vehicle generally in the order that they entered the vehicle. Uh, Mission Specialist 2, Steve Hawley, just egressed. and We will see the other Mission Specialist come out, uh, followed by the pilot, and then Commander Eileen Collins will be the last to leave. Again, the Mission Managers are meeting at this time to discuss the indications that led us to abort our launch at uh, just a few seconds before liftoff, uh, uh, right before we ignited the three main engines. Uh, they're looking at the turnaround scenarios. Okay. Uh, indications are that we could see a 48-hour turnaround or uh, possibly a 24-hour turnaround if we can get the workload and all the operations completed in a timely manner. Uh, the primary concern for turnaround is the uh, replacement of the igniters that were firing at the time we called the abort. Uh, these igniters burn up any stray hydrogen that may be in the area of the aft engine compartment, or not the aft engine compartment, but any hydrogen that may be in the area of the engine bells prior to main engine ignition. Uh, because these igniters lit, uh, they must be replaced and it will be determined at this time over the next hour or so how long that replacement will take and whether we can do it to support it.